With no further ado, please, Mr. Edwin McCain. our first show. So we've listened to songs all the way up, her songs and my songs when we were singing harmonies in the car and just trying to figure out how it's going to go and um, more, more than anything like um, I like doing these really impromptu shows that I don't like to script out much. I like to just see where it'll go and have it be real conversational because for me some of the best times, some, especially some of the best musical moments I've ever had have been sitting around in somebody's house in the living room with other musicians that don't really know each other's music and you know we're playing and we're just chatting and sort of getting the the feel for how songs got written and and singing on each other's stuff and you know it may not be perfect but it's fun you know it's fun for me and it's a discovery process and I think and I've been doing that with uh, lots of people in front of crowds and it just seems like they um, they seem to like it a little bit better than just having a set thing performed for them. You know, I, I like it when it's, we don't know what we're doing and we'll get to it when we get to it. But it's killing time, so unkind. And we take this to run further and further. I own it to find, oh, no finish lines. If you let me be. I enjoy complicated music. Maya writes a lot of complicated music. I actually write and perform kind of simplistic stuff for myself. But um, it's it's um, you know it's just fun to and we're we're going over stuff we've written we've written together and that we haven't played together ever. And so you know by showtime tonight we'll be totally terrified and just right at that right energy level to play them. In the notes, it's in the space between. I've written songs and you get all snotty nosed, for, for lack of a better term, you know, you get really emotional and um, and those have always seemed to be the ones that people get. I mean the ones that sort of are, are hard to write because I'm either admitting too much or, or digging into personal stuff that's you know uh, heavy for me. Um, those are the really and that's really kind of the, the for me the, the whole songwriter life has been about digging into the stuff I really don't want to talk about. I've cried on stage before. I mean, I, I don't think I'd, I, mean, I don't think it was obvious, but I've gotten choked up. A couple of times. I mean, I was, there's a song that I play called See Off This Mountain that I wrote for my grandmother. And, um, and it's basically sort of chronicles my life as a, from a little kid um, up until the day that she died. And, uh, and, and it's, you know, I'm basically living, reliving all these great memories every night. And, and they're very real to me. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, it gets, I mean, I've gotten, it gets pretty emotional for me. Um, but I love that. I mean, I think that's the best part about it. I mean, not, I, f I feel like that, that, that and, and it's been, you know, the thing I say is the thing that makes you powerful is the thing that will also kill you. But I breathe it all in as much as I can. And, you know, that sort of, um, you know, I don't really care what it smells like. I'm breathing deep kind of thing. I don't know if that makes sense. It's just life is great. It's, it's, it's horribly wonderful <laughs> at times. <laughs> 
And that's one of the reasons why I, I really didn't do well in the big, big time record industry is because it, none of, hardly any of that music is predicated on true emotion or real life. And you know, there's teams of songwriters just kind of manufacturing this stuff. And I was like, wow, this, this isn't where I belong. And, and uh, so my exit was hasty. And, but I mean, you know, I'm, I'm so lucky to have had David Wilcox is my sort of musical hero. I mean, I just think that that guy's the, you know, he's the deep end of the pool as far as songwriting goes. He's tackling complex human emotions and theology and all this amazing stuff. And and uh, and that was what I aspired to, is to be able to go and play for a couple hundred people a night and have a night full of music. And I, I found myself in, a, in an industry that was so busy just pushing one song. So you'd have 5,000 people at a show waiting to hear one song going, when's he going to play the song? It's like, well, this sucks, you know, why am I here? Like, why don't I just come out here and play the one song and we can all go do something else? Because you're, you know, no, one, no one's interested, you know, at that level, when you've got the radio hit, I mean, literally there's a thousand people there just going, when's he going to play the song? It's like, wow. That's why, that's why you get the feeling like, like, why don't the labels just put all the people together and everybody just come out and play their one song and be done with it? I admit to, you know, all sorts of things in my music, you know, addiction, love, pain, happiness, all the things. I mean, I feel like everybody does. Anybody in an artistic endeavor, hopefully, is the ambassador of possibility. <laughs>